All right, everyone, here is the, um, the video I was talking about earlier, the, um, the problems. So first thing I want to talk about, you need to have all your tools. Um, I don't care if you hire a welder or not, things can happen. Um, let's say your welder gets COVID or they, uh, someone in their family passes away or, you know, anything could happen really. Um, any emergency could happen. Um, have all the tools that your welder would have. Um, you can never be too prepared. I have two to 50 million of everything. Like I have four bottles, I have four nipple syringes, um, or syringe nipples, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, I always have formula on hand. Um, I have extra light bulbs. I have an extra lamp. Um, just really everything you need to have extra of extra thermometers because what if, what if you're taking your dog's temp and the thermometer breaks i had that happen one time and i didn't have a thermometer and i was freaking out so have all the tools that you need um really there's no excuse not to have the tools that you need um and that's the other thing like because i always have extra things like if you're local and you need something that's minor like a bottle I would be more than happy to help you out and, and get you a bottle. Um, so yeah, I'm always trying to help people. I'm always trying to be there for everyone. Um, I, you know, if you're working with me and you're not su successful, then I'm not successful either. So that's the most important part. Um, I'm always here to help you if you need it. And that's something to remember. Um, milk production, super important. Um, Check your females a couple days before they are due. Um, if they don't have colostrum at all, um, you're gonna wanna get some domperidone to get that milk production into, happening into place. So um, Dahlia right now doesn't have any milk at all. If she doesn't have it by Monday, then um, I'm gonna start her on domperidone. There's another uh, thing that you can do to help. A lot of people suggest like homemade oat milk cream pies and stuff like that. Um, I really just use fenugreek or oxymama. Oxymama has fenugreek in it. Um, if you're gonna give fenugreek, you wanna give it three times a day until the mom's breath smells like um, maple syrup. And if you've ever popped a, a capsule, you know that it smells like maple, so it's kind of crazy. But um, that helps a lot. If your female doesn't have milk, that is a problem. Um, you're gonna wanna get, um, I think it's called nurse mate. I don't know, you can get colostrum from Revival Vet or revivalanimal.com. Um, I always have it on hand. I haven't used it in the past couple litters. Um, I did use it on the litter that I was whelping because the mom didn't have milk. But my own personal litters, I haven't had to use it, um, thankfully. <laughs> uh, colostrum is super important. It has a lot of antibodies and it also acts as um, a laxative. It helps with gut health. Um, just like in human babies, there's, there's an abundance of um, blood that's produced right before they're born because they're going from that inside sterile environment to the outside world, um, which prepares them for that change. So when, when they come out, um, all of that goes to waste and the body needs help pushing that out. So that's what the colostrum helps. Um, that's why the first poop is very, very sticky and gross and it's like tar and it's hard to get off of you. So, um, that's the other thing that's good for. It also helps, uh, to prevent allergies from happening, um, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, Espelac, uh, I don't use powdered stuff. I don't like the powdered stuff. It's hard to mix. If you use a blender, then you're gonna incorporate air and then your puppies are, are gonna get finicky and it's just not a good time. Um, so I always get the canned stuff. It's kind of expensive, but it's worth it. Um, another thing that you can use is Learberg formula. You can find the recipe online. It has goat's milk, um, yogurt, egg yolks, caro syrup, and some other stuff. Um, don't use goat's milk, plain, like on its own. Um, it's not, doesn't have enough nutrients. It doesn't, the calories aren't high enough um, and your puppy will not do well on it. Um, I have used goat's milk before and it just, it wasn't great. So there's always gonna be litters that you have that are gonna be hard. It doesn't matter. Like all these breeders are making breeding out to be amazing and whatever, but they don't tell you the problems that they have and the amount of time and effort and 
lost money and whatever. Like you could spend $6,000 on a stud fee, have it, have the semen shipped and your dog not take. Well, then you've lost all the money on your progesterone tests, on the shipping, on the stud fee, and then you have to wait another six months to even try again. So, um, yeah, not all litters go as planned. Um, back when I lost my first puppy, it was my very first litter. That letter sucked. I cried like every day for a month and a half, two months. Um, sometimes the problems don't show up until later. So um, I think it was like five days we got into it. He wasn't growing as fast as the other puppies. Um, he kept like vomiting, all kinds of stuff. His belly was rock hard. We took him to the emergency vet. The emergency vet said that he had an ileus, which is, or an ileum either word works, um, which is an obstruction of the intestines. They can either be born with it or they can ingest something. Well, he had neither. Um, they wanted to euthanize him right then and there. I said, no, I'm gonna take him for um, a second opinion. So five, day, five days later, I, kept, I had kept him alive. Um, they also said that he had aspiration pneumonia. So we had him on David's um, nebulizer. We put him in a box. We did the nebulizing in there. Um, we tried we tried an enema, we tried the warm water bath, we tried everything. Um, but five days later, I took him to the vet, our vet, who's absolutely amazing. <clears throat> and he said that he was just severely dehydrated. He asked me a bunch of questions about what he was on because he wouldn't, he wouldn't latch. So I had him on goat's milk or um, Espelac, the powdered stuff. And the vet told me to switch to goat's milk because um, a lot of times the goat's milk Espelac is a lot easier on their bellies which if you're gonna use goat's milk, use the goat's milk Espelac because it, it has all the nutrients that the puppies need. Um, you know, as time went on, the, these, the bigger puppies were hitting milestones. They were like three pounds, he was only 12 ounces. Um, his head was huge, his eyes were like bugged out and on the side of his head, his ears were, were low set instead of up. Um, he could barely walk and then when he did walk, it was like he was exhausted, like he could barely breathe. So the doctor wanted him to come back in two weeks after that initial checkup, after they pumped him full of fluids since they said he was dehydrated. Um, and uh, when we came back, he said that, that he was a hydro puppy. Um, his respiratory system was severely underdeveloped. Um, he had a oxygen level of 70% or something like that, which humans get hospitalized at like 98% or less. So. Um, that pup unfortunately didn't make it. It broke my heart. Like I said, I cried for like forever, but, um, oh, I did try the Learberg formula on him, but I don't know how good it worked because he was so sick anyways. Um, yeah, he was just really sick, but other breeders swear by it. They think they say it's amazing. Um, you know, it has with the yogurt, it has the probiotics and, and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, it's, it's really good. Um, but yeah, like some, some litters just don't go as planned. Um, last year on my 30th birthday, I had a litter come an, another pregnant female who had puppies the next day, same owner, same household. Um, the, the mom had, the one mom had nine puppies and the other one had five. The one who didn't have milk come in, which I tried everything on, um, I put her puppies on the other mom. So it, I was really lucky to have a wet nurse. I don't know what I would have done if I didn't have another dog to um, to do that for me. It would have been really stressful. Um, bottle feeding is just not the same. It's not the same as mom's milk. And uh, a lot of times when you start with bottle feeding and then you go to mom's milk, their, their gut health is already so messed up and um, leave her alone then they get diarrhea then they lose weight because they have diarrhea and then like it's just a mess it's a mess and I don't wish it on anyone and it's super super stressful they don't like the the bottle nipples as much as they like the mom's nipples and it's hard to feed them and like you're working really hard and you get frustrated and it's just not it's not great um, another thing you can do is um, Tube feed, I've never had to do that before. Um, usually you only tube feed if you have like fading puppies or um, a cleft, a cleft puppy. I've never had a cleft puppy before. Um, they say that it is genetic or no, sorry. Um, I mean, it can be. 
but um, it's usually because they don't have the right nutrients within the first 30 days of pregnancy. So folic acid is um, the main thing that you wanna give your females. Um, it prevents all of that stuff and whatever. Milk production. Aspiration, if your female is producing milk like crazy or if you're bottle feeding and the bottle has um, too heavy of a flow, the puppies can um, shoot nose or <laughs> shoot nose out their milk, jeez. Shoot milk out their nose, um, which is normal, it's totally fine. Um, if you notice it, take them off, suction, until you, until there's no more um, uh, fluid coming out. You wanna listen to them, put them up to your ear to make sure that they don't have any fluid in their lungs. If they do, keep sucking, keep sucking, keep sucking. You can pat them like this to get them to scream and like push that, that fluid and mucus out, um, super important. Um, another way they can aspirate is if they vomit, if they vomit and then they suck it back in, um, or even burping, like sometimes they'll burp, they'll burp some, some milk up, um, uh, they can aspirate on that. Um, aspiration pneumonia is no joke. So if you think that your puppy has aspiration pneumonia, it's, a, it's super important to take them to the vet, get them on antibiotics and do everything that you can. Uh, I hear colli colloidal, colloidal something like that, silver, is really, really good if you put it in your nebulizer and you nebulize with that. It has um, antibiotic properties and stuff like that. So um, that's a huge thing. Unfortunately, with any type of pneumonia, you have um, a high chance of reoccurrence. So you wanna nip that in the bud as soon as possible. Make sure um, you get that, that stuff taken care of. Um, mega esophagus, if your puppy is vomiting after every meal, um, whether it's eating off the nipple or um, mush or regular food, if they're vomiting after every meal, that is something you need to think about. It could be a food allergy. It could be that they have a bacteria or a gut infection. Um, it could be, did I say allergy? Yeah, food allergy. Um, they could be having a hard time di digesting mom's milk. There could be a whole bunch of different factors of why the puppy is vomiting, but um, if they're vomiting after every meal, you want to um, double check for that mega esophagus to make sure it's not that. Um, if it is mega esophagus, it is genetic. You don't want to breed that dog. Um, with mega esophagus, the esophagus is too short and it's kind of like, if I read correctly, if I remember correctly, it, it doesn't have the motor skills in here to push it down into the stomach. So when, when you're feeding, now you can give a dog with mega esophagus a quality of life, but it takes extra care. It is a special needs dog. And you're when you're feeding, you're gonna have to blend the food, sit them up in a, in a chair, and let that food go down into the stomach for at least 15 minutes. Um, what did I write? Oh, congenital metatarsal hyperextension or hyperflexion, something like that. Um, so if you have a large litter of puppies, it's seen a lot in um, English Bulldogs. If you have a large litter of puppies or like the mom's small, um, a lot of the times the puppy's paws get smushed. The tendons here tighten up as they're growing and they get stuck like that. So you have to literally stretch the paw out in the direction that you want to go. It's not going to go very far at first. And then you massage it. You massage it. It's like physical therapy for a puppy. And you do that every single feeding. And by the time they're eight weeks old, it's back to normal. So um, I read an article that was actually sent to us by the vet about this um, this ailment. And um, they used to actually euthanize dogs that had this problem. But really, it's just it's just a tightening of the tendons. And all you have to do is massage it out and do like little puppy physical therapy. Um, not not a huge deal. Um, they're usually you would never know that they had it. Um, hydrocephalus. Uh, as I mentioned before, I lost a puppy to hydrocephalus. It is genetic. Unfortunately, you cannot um, you can't test for it. It runs in every single breed that has a bulbous head. Um, Frenchies, Bostons, English, Bulldogs, um, Cocker Spaniels, um, Dachshunds, Chihuahuas, 
And there was another one that they told me about that that was a uh, that caught me off guard that I wouldn't have expected. Um, but it runs in these breeds. It's super common. The vet told me to expect it one out of 150 to 100 puppies. So um, signs of hydro are neurological problems like they can't walk. They have a hard time with balance. Um, obviously, the super bulbous head from the the swelling from the, um, the extra fluid on the brain. Um, the eyes, the eyes are like off to the side and they're super bulgy. Ears set back low, um, stuff like that. Uh, the second puppy I ever lost was a couple months ago. It wasn't from my litter, but he did have hydrocephalus. He also had an open fontanelle. Now the fontanelle is Dahlia, come here, come here, Dee. The fontanelle right here, when puppies are born, they have an open plate right here. The fontanelle closes over time. Well, his never closed, and it was like this giant freaking hole on the top of his head, and if you touched it, you could actually feel his brain. So that was pretty crazy. Um, so he had um, the hydro neurological disorder and the open fontanelle. Um, he couldn't walk, he couldn't crawl, he couldn't latch. Um, a lot of times puppies with hydro, they can't latch. Um, you have to like to feed them and stuff like that. Um, he couldn't latch. What else? I mean, it was heartbreaking to watch. Like he would just, he would crawl, he would take a couple steps, fall over on his side and then end up on his back. And then he would be like this and screaming. And it was just, it was awful. Um, I also knew when he came home that something was wrong. Um, you know, the vets are amazing and, and they check for certain things and they listen for stuff. What are you doing, crazy girl? <laughs> um, but I always check my puppies when they come home and if I'm at the point now in my breeding career where if something's wrong, like severely, severely wrong, I know. And I knew right away with this puppy that something wasn't right. I didn't know what it was, but I knew something wasn't right. Um, and so when I took him, I took him twice to the vet. The first time she looked at him and was like, give him some more time. It's really hard to see that something's wrong at this point. And then the second time I actually brought um, another puppy with me to compare size and, you know, all that stuff. And she was thankful that I brought that puppy with, with me so that she could get a good idea of where the other puppies were at versus this one. And uh, yeah, so that's how that happened. Um, Super heartbreaking. It's not fun. Um, next, eye infections. Eye infections are super, super important and um, because they're so close to the brain, um, anything could go wrong and it could go straight to the brain. So you wanna be really careful and vigilant with eye infections. Now, it is common for puppies to get eye infections, conjunctivitis, um, you know, as they're coming out of the womb, there's bacteria, um, all kinds of stuff or like if they're eating and crawling over each other they can poke in the eye um, and obviously there's like bacteria on the fingernails and stuff like that so um, if you notice that your puppy's eye is sw swelling um, you might notice that there's some crusties on the corner of the eye um, you want to first of all clean it off with some saline solution you can do a hot compress get all of that gunk off first try to open the eye if you can obviously there's that little pinhole that the pus is draining out of gently push over the eye like this push it over push it over get all that pus out um saline 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 keep trying to open that eye um using a warm compress a warm wet compress will really hope help to loosen that seal and get it open um a lot of people recommend teramycin. It's kind of close or similar to the um, the prescription um, eye ointment that I was given. I forget what it's called. It's like Neo something something whatever. Um, it's made with by Bausch and Lomb, um, the famous eye drop company. But um, teramycin, I hear, is great to have on hand at all times. Um, you can get it off RevivalAnimal.com or I think Chewy has it. Maybe even Amazon. But um, if you need it in a pinch, I hear it's amazing. Um, the expiration date 
it's really far out so it'll last you forever the only reason i haven't bought it is because i still have my original eye ointment that doesn't expire for like another year so i'm okay um but yeah uh get it open or try to get it open use saline solution if you can't get it open let's say so like the puppy the first puppy that i lost also got an eye infection um if you can't get it open within like a day or two, you need to take them to the vet, have it open. They'll give you antibiotics. They'll give you that prescription eye ointment and you're gonna um, clean that out three times a day. Not a big deal, cause it does happen. But if you let it get too bad, it could result in blindness and other things. Um, UTIs, UTIs are also common in puppies, especially the females. Um, Obviously, some signs of UTIs, frequent urination, but then there's other stuff like um, vomiting, diarrhea, and um, fever. Uh, I had a puppy from, <laughs> that first litter almost killed me, man, it almost killed me. So, three things happened. I lost the puppy with hydro, then we had this UTI problem. So I noticed one day she, she was puking, and I was like, okay, you know, I talked to my mentor, and my mentor was like, oh, it's probably just her food, like, don't worry about it, just switch the food to lamb. So I switched the food. Well, she kept vomiting and I'm like, I don't, I don't know what's going on. So one day I sat there and I watched her for like an hour and a half. And this puppy, I, I kid you not, peed like 30 times in an hour. And it was just like one drop. So I took her to the vet and they're like, yeah, she has a UTI. I had to give her sub-Q fluids every eight hours for three days and antibiotics. That was fun. Um, but yeah, UTIs, not fun, not fun. Um, so Keep an eye out for that. Heating and cooling, same litter. The one that almost killed me. Um, one night, we used to do it in the basement because there was a lot of space. Um, somehow, I don't know if the dogs were playing or something, but somehow the heater cord got unplugged and it was, it got pretty cold in the basement. Like, I wanna say like 66 degrees. And I woke up in the middle of the night, they were crying, they were shivering, the boy was vomiting. I was just like, oh my God, my life. <laughs> so I called the vet and I'm like, this is what's happening. And he's like, oh, they probably just got a little too cold. Put the, the heater back on, make sure, you know, they heat back up, they should be fine. Just keep an eye on them. Um, if, if it gets too hot, they will start panting, they'll get dehydrated, um, you know, drooling, whatever. It's, it's the same as like, you know, a heat stroke in the summer. So you wanna make sure that, that your temps are perfect. Um, now my puppies have their own rooms. They have, they're in the guest rooms. We have two of them. Um, I have the lamp and the lamp is plugged into a reptile thermostat, which has um, a thermometer that hangs down. It's a cord that hangs down and I put it in in one corner of the box, of the whelping box. So that space is always 84 degrees. Like when, when they first come home, I have it set to 84 degrees. As you know, the weeks progress, we lower it and we lower it. But um, that particular corner is always 84 degrees. If they get too hot, they can move. If they get too cold, they can come back. I also have a heating pad. The heating pad heats up to the internal temperature of the puppies. That is in a separate corner. So they have options. Um, my room or rooms, they typically stay around 76 degrees the entire time. You don't want mom to get too hot because that obviously is not good for her either. So, um, I do have a heater in the rooms as well. If I need it, I might turn it on for 20 minutes, make sure the room is hot enough or warm enough. And then, uh, once it hits a certain temperature, I turn it off. Um, Umbilical cords and hernias. That's also fun. Um, always have unflavored um, dental floss in your stash because, um, you know, they suck on each other. Mom might lick too hard, whatever. They might come in untied. Tie that up real fast as close to the, um, the umbilical cord as you can get or the belly as you can get. Um, if, if mom licks too hard, she can accidentally pull it, pull it out and it can cause a hernia. I did have two puppies one time. Elsa did that. Um, I had, I had to retie the other one and use Neosporin and the one I had to get stitches on. Not a big deal. The one that 
I didn't have to add stitches on. He has an Audi and it's actually pretty cute. Um, no hernia though. Hernias, hernias are tricky. They can be genetic or um, trauma induced. Uh, if it is genetic, you that's not a good breeding dog. You don't wanna breed that dog. So um, consult with your vet, see what their opinion is. Um, if the parents have a history of producing hernias or if they themselves have a hernia and you bought this puppy for breeding, then um, I highly suggest not breeding it because you're gonna pass it on. Um, hernias can be fixed at spay and neuter, super easy surgery. They just cut it open and stitch it back up. Um, if you have a female that's had it and you do intend on breeding, like I said, I would not breed that. However, you know, it, the reason why you don't want to breed is because um, as when you breed, as the belly grows, that pressure can reopen that hernia and it can come back. So, um, as well as if it's genetic, you can pass it on. Do, 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 do. And then last but not least, what I want to talk about is um, dehydration. So when you have adult dogs, a lot of people check dehydration by tenting. So basically what tenting is, is you, you grab the skin on the back of their neck and pull up. If it goes back instantly, like it did here, they're not dehydrated. If, it, if, it, if you pull it out and it takes a long time to go back, that's, that's a, um, a sign for dehydration. I don't rely on that. And the vet specifically told me not to rely on that for checking for dehydration. Um, what you wanna do is you wanna stick your finger in there. If it feels like peanut butter, if it's super sticky and super gummy, they're dehydrated. You need to get sub-Q liquids and um, Pedialyte in there as soon as possible. Uh, if you have any more questions, feel free. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave a comment. Sorry, my alarm went off. It's time to feed the puppies again and do a rotation. But yeah, um, more than happy to answer any questions. I cannot stress enough, have a bajillion of your tools. Have them, have your tools. Um, no matter what, whether you're whelping yourself or someone else is whelping for you, have your tools in case of emergency. Have all the tools. Um, my tool, my list, my breeding whelping lists are on um, the website. I also have um, shopping lists on Amazon, um, breeding, whelping, welcome home, new puppy, and everyday items. Those are the four lists I have on Amazon. Check out our link tree um, and get everything that you need, you guys. Um, if you look at our list, my document that I uploaded on the website, some of the stuff is not on Amazon because you can't, you, you can't get it on Amazon. So like um, the needles and stuff, those I get on Revival. Um, I've bought needles off of Amazon before and they're huge, they're massive, they're too long. I just, I don't like them. So, um, so check it out, look at it, and then, uh, yeah. Good luck, best of luck everyone. If you have questions, like I said, leave a comment, reach out to me on Instagram, send me an email, Facebook, I have a Facebook as well. So, um, yeah, have a good day.